Hi, thanks for joining us for this special episode of The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. I'm Chris Cooper. What is a soilless mix? What does inoculate mean? Do you have inflorescence in your flower bed? Is that bad? Today we're defining gardening terms. Also, grapes are great to snack on and you can grow them in your garden too. Plus, we're going to lay some sod, install a drip irrigation system in the vegetable garden, and of course, answer lots of viewer questions. It's 90 minutes of gardening and it's just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is our horticulture expert. And Mr. D is here. Thanks Howdy. for joining us. Glad to be here. Good to be here. Dr. Kelly, this is going to be fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. We always like having you here. <laughs> Thank you. I enjoy right. being here. Well, good, good. Well, guess what we have for you today? <laughs> no, I don't know. Gardening terms, right? <laughs> so you're so good at that. <laughs> all right, so let's start with our first gardening term. And again, these are terms that we throw around all the time, right? Right, yeah. So we want to make sure people know what they are. Yeah. Okay, so our first term is ornamental. Ornamentals, uh -huh. yeah, that can mean a lot of things, okay. but in our gardening industry and in the gardening world, that refers to plants that are used for decorative purposes in landscapes mm -hmm. and around buildings and yards. It can be specimens, it can be even cut flowers, you know, thing, or house plants even. When you encompass the whole word ornamentals, you know, that's what we talk about. But now in the industry, you know, the guys that grow the plants, you know, the ornamentals to them or more the woodies, okay. like shrubs, mm -hmm. trees, mm -hmm. you know, those kind of things. But it can it can refer to perennials as well, the herbaceous. You know, okay. so that's just depending on who you're talking to. But it's decorative plants that are used in our landscapes. Okay. All right, our next term is soilless mix. We hear yeah. that term a lot, yeah, right? Yeah, we do. We really do. And we, we <laughs> throw that around a lot. Uh -huh. But then, you know, what's even a misnomer more is people go and they'll say, well, I'm going to go buy some pot and soil. <laughs> right. You know, most of what they're buying nowadays is not soil. You know, right. it doesn't have any <laughs> field soil in it. It's uh, things like peat and um, perlite oh, and yeah. vermiculite, right. maybe even some sand or bark. You know, so it's not soil. It's, you know, from the garden you dig up. It's not like that. So soilless mix are things, mixes, commercial mixes mm -hmm. that we buy for our pots and things like that that contains no soil. No. You know, sometimes they'll have a fertilizer charge mm -hmm. in them, you know, for a while. And they're really great because they've got all of the properties you want in a good soil. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's soilless mix. Yeah. All right, here's our next gardening term, sucker. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> P.T. Right. Barnum said there's one born every minute, right? Isn't that what he said? But that's not what we're talking right. about. A sucker, as a horticultural or gardening term, refers to a shoot mm. that arises from the base of a, of a, of a usually a shrub or a tree right. that, that we really don't want in most cases. You know, we usually remove it. For example, some of our uh, crepe myrtle yes. cultivars want a sucker mm -hmm. and shoot up all these little shoots from the base when what we want is to make more of a tree form, you know, with our tree right. form crepe myrtles. So we usually just cut those off. And they can also arise not from the base of a plant, but also from roots, from adventitious buds. Mm -hmm. Think about mimosa. Mm -hmm. You know how right. if you have a mimosa tree and then it'll start shooting up everywhere sure across the okay. yard? You know, that's, those are suckers theoretically too because they're coming off of a root okay. from that parent tree. That's a good example, okay. All right. Side dress is our next term, and of course, we hear that all the time. That's yeah, gardening. yeah, 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 and that's a, a term to describe a type of fertilize, fertilization. Okay. You know, how you do that. You know, we can broadcast, just get out there and just throw it every which way. <laughs> that's called broadcast, and then we have a side dress, and there's other terms as, as well for other types, but we're going to okay. talk about side dress, okay. and that's usually uh, in vegetable gardening. Mm -hmm. And you do that at a certain stage of growth when the plant is needing another big boost of fertilizer, and particularly nitrogen, mm -hmm. to help them keep growing through the growing season. And to side dress, 
you just open a trench right beside the row away from where the seeds are but close you know mm -hmm. you don't want to burn the roots and you just pull a trench and then just put your fertilizer there hence side dress <laughs> yeah right mm -hmm. <laughs> and some of the other crops that we side dress are typically are the vining crops vegetable vining crops like cucumbers uh, some of the squash mm -hmm. that we have that vine watermelons cantaloupes and we usually do that when they just begin to what we call run, okay. you know, when they start yes. vining. Right. Yeah. I tell you, I think even Mr. D like that one. He's not in his head. <laughs> it's pretty good. All right, here's our next gardening term, damping off. Yeah, that's, huh. a, <laughs> that's, a, that's a real descriptive term. <laughs> <laughs> and it refers to uh, a condition or a disease mm -hmm. that happens. It's all kind, it can be a different kinds of pathogens that cause this, okay. and it's uh, when the conditions are wet and cool. Yeah. Happens in germination beds with young seedlings usually. Mm -hmm. And just to prevent that, which is very common, it's a very common problem that happens when we try to grow seedlings, like particularly now. Oh, we yeah. want to grow something right. on the windowsill. You know, it's still cool and kind of damp there by the window or whatever. So you get uh, little old seedlings that just flop over. They die, the stem will die at the soil level and they just flop over, mm -hmm. you know, damping off. They fall off or fall over. But you can prevent that by not putting them in cool and wet conditions if you've got a little germination tray or something, mm -hmm. or using a sterile mix, like go buy one of those soilless no, mixes. <laughs> Don't get it out of your yard, which could be full of those kind of pathogens. So that's a good way to prevent it too. Always start with fresh mix okay. for your germination beds. And yeah. usually cool, wet weather. It's what okay. makes it worse, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay. Our next gardening term is loam. Yeah, loam, loam. or loamy soil, right. yeah. Um, that's, uh, that describes a type of soil that we really want in our gardens. <laughs> and right. it can be, you know, you can tell people, that you'll ask, what kind of soil I got? Oh, I got a loam, you know, and right. they're like, you know, well, you know dang, it's I got like clay, clay. yeah, I got clay, you know. It's like gumbo to me. <laughs> yeah, so loam is, a, <laughs> is the type of good, friable soil that farmers love. You know, she's usually found like in bottom land naturally, yeah. you know, where Memphis stuff's silt loam. Yeah. Yeah, One yeah. Of the best and it can be around. right. And it can be a, a combination of silt and humus and a little bit of sand, you know, so it's a nice and a little bit of clay. Little bit little of clay. Bit, right. Little bit. Needle. Just the yeah. right little amount of clay to make it, you know, have the right water retention plus good drainage. You know, so it's the type of soil that we kinda want. Yeah. And it does occur naturally in some places, it does. you know, yeah. and it's high in vegetable matter, you mm -hmm. know, decayed vegetable matter. Right. So it has a little more organic or humus content too. So. Okay. Yeah, that's what a lot of people want. Yeah. Loam. Good. Good garden soil Good garden is usually soil. called loam. That's right. Yeah. All right. Here's our next gardening term: inflorescence. Yeah. yeah. And you actually and have you, examples of that, right? Yeah, you kind of alluded to that yeah. as something maybe bad. No, yeah. it's not bad. Do you have it in your garden? Uh, yeah, you <laughs> want it in your garden. All if right. you want flowers, you know, yeah, you got inflorescence. And that's a term that means the entire flower structure, which okay. could be the flowers, the bracts, the little stems, you know, and the branches that encompass the whole floral part of the plant. And for example, there's all kind of terms to describe the different kinds of inflorescence. And people would be very familiar with the single flower, like mm -hmm. a hibiscus. Right. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, no called right. a single right. inflorescence. You've just got the big flower mm -hmm. and that's it. But now, for example, there's other types that this one that I brought is called an umbel. And it's a type of inflorescence that is a grouping of flowers. And if you can see, this, these little individual dudes right here <laughs> are actual flowers. Each of these little things are flowers, little trumpet flowers. But they're, they're on a structure that they're all connected together, you see? Mm -hmm. And that's called an umbel. So it's a grouping of you know, different inflorescence together. And another example of an umbel that people might be familiar with is the Queen Anne's Lace. Oh, you know, everybody right, knows right. Queen Anne's that's lace. Right, right, that's that's right. an umbel okay. inflorescence. And then we have another one called, there's all kinds. There's one called a raceme, which would be the arrangement of flowers that are really close to the stem, like a foxglove. Okay. You know that, yeah, so that there's, but that's the term for the entire flower structure, including, you know, the different parts. Okay, inflorescence. Yeah, yeah right. you want that in your garden. Yeah, you want that. Yeah. Right, that's good stuff. <laughs> all right, here's our next one. We want this in the garden too, node. 
Node, yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember when I was taking botany, we had nodes and inner nodes. <laughs> right, and, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I got an example of that I want to show you okay. too. Uh, this is a, and I didn't tell y'all what this was. Oh yeah, but please do. Yeah, that's an Edgeworthia. Okay. And it's very, very fragrant. It's called Chinese paper bush. Okay. And of course it's blooming now, obviously. So, you know, it's a great plant to have in the early, early spring garden because it blooms before it flowers. And it I mean, smells good. It blooms before it flowers. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that was smart. Yeah. Anyway, back up. It flowers before it leaves out. Right. <laughs> it's Does it need full sun? Uh, no, it, it gets a little shade at my house. Okay. So I believe, though, it could grow pretty much in full sun, maybe a little afternoon shade. But get back to the node issue. Uh, right here, this is a um, bay leaf, mm -hmm. you know, the plant that has this, the herb, that's the bay leaf we buy in the grocery store. But a node is a little bit of a bump on the stem. See it's little bumps? Mm -hmm. Those are called nodes, and it's the place where they're buds, and the buds can be a leaf bud or they can be a flower bud. So it's the little bump on the stem where leaves or flowers arise. And so it's a bump here, bump here, bump. And dormant, when they're dormant, you know, trees right now, you can really see, all right, you, you know, can. all the little nodes. Yes, so it's the place where the buds are, and they can be flower buds or leaf buds. Okay. It shows up really good on corn plant. Oh, yeah? Or bamboo. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. certainly. Yeah, yeah. on bamboo yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you much, Dr. K. We yeah, appreciate sure, that. Sure, Always no fun. problem. <laughs> there are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, so Brooklyn, you're gonna show us how to lay side. Yeah, we're gonna see how to lay so side. So how do we get started with that? How we get started? The first thing while we, get, while we land this side now, oh, we had a friend out here, we wanna lay some side. Okay. And he started off, he's been here about 20 years now. Okay. And he, he had Bermuda grass down here. Mm -hmm. And over a period of time, you see he got some big old tall oak, oak tree. You know, right. oak tree now, and it was probably <laughs> bit the house. They were real small, he had Bermuda grass mm -hmm. down here. And over a period of time, the grass began to die. And now he wanna go with, with a new grass. Okay. And we know that, uh, Zoysia grass would do good in, in partial shade, but we find a new one, raw right. zoysia. Okay. It'll do good and it'll do good in in, uh, in shade. Okay. So he go with a, a raw zoysia this time in here. But before he got started, the first thing he did now he kicked everything out of here. Okay. He got some roundup and sprayed everything. Whole yard. Whole yard. Right. Turn it, turn it brown. <laughs> kid. Then he came back in with this garden tiller and tilled it up. Okay. Then before you get started doing everything, another thing, don't till it when it wet. Because those hard panels get in there, it's hard to break up. Okay. So you want to make sure it's dry. Then once you get a tip, you want to you want to rake it out. So I got it rake here. We're gonna show you just rake it out real smooth, smooth it out real good. Oh, you want the soil to come in. You want to come in contact with some good loose soil, for the soil can catch on real good. Okay. See how you doing that? Right. Rake Not it out smooth. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> you want, the muscle work. So you're going to level it out real good, real smooth. Then you're going to come in and uh, lay your saw. But another thing, when we did that, he did a saw test. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And the saw test came back. His pH was kind of low. He needed to add some lime. They told him to add um, uh, 100 pounds per 1,000 square feet. Okay. But you don't want to do all that at one time now. You want to do probably about 30 pounds at a time, then come back in and do it again once the grass catch on and start growing real good. All right. Dr. Cooper, now you, you, you see sun. It's cut a certain way. And we're gonna start right here because we don't let no when you give it the lake side, you got some sprinkle heads out there. You got a thing. <laughs> you need to make sure you mark those out like you got right here. You got them sucking around there. Right. Cause we didn't know that was a sprinkle head. That's right. You, you don't want to go out there and cover, cover it up. up. <laughs> you, you wonder why it's not doing any good. <laughs> now you see side on this ridge here. Now it cut a certain way. When you buy side, it cut a certain way that it fit in. And you want it to fit in. Would be real good. See, they go together. Okay, so you gotta butt it up. Butt it good, up. Huh? Yeah, see that real good. Like that. See that? How I butt it up. Don't lay another one here. Make sure you butt it real good. In there, you look at it. That's where it go. See that look real good in there? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we're gonna stop here and come back. 
when you land, it's like you don't want to make sure that you don't have the sing right there. See that sing there? You don't want the sing. You don't want to lay it like that. Right. But the sing going to get when it rain, it'll wash up. Yeah, you can see the water channels. The water channels get in there. So you want to come back. Not only that, weeds to grow in between that, too. Weeds going to, you want to come back just like that in there. And come on down because you want to make sure that sod is uh, tight together. So, then you come back in here again, you make sure you find the right edge, but then put it real good together. Hope we ain't got another sprinkle head down there. <laughs> I hope not. If it is, it's covered up. <laughs> it's covered up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know you might keep it regular in there. So it's got to be right, right? You said right smooth. Out. Real smooth. smooth. Good contact is what you're good looking contact, for. Good contact, right? good, good contact. In there, so that look good there. How they look? Look good so far. Have look you good. done this before? <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, you know what you're doing, huh? You know what we're doing there. You know when you're coming, you did all, all kinds of odd uh, job and catching in there. So we get to watch those in the end and make sure they go together. Okay. That's where they go. Yeah. Now, Booger, if you flip this up, man, you can see it has a real good root system in there, too. Oh, yeah, they're real good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real good root system in there. And, and another thing, when you buy sod, you know, you don't want to lay on the pallet too long. Okay. Try to, when you have it, a ship, at less than two or three days, try to be able to put it down. Right. You don't want to set that, because we are dry out. Now, we are doing this in the summertime. I mean, it's real, real hot, and it's been real dry. What you want to do, you want to water down some. Okay. But, but the roosters won't get into no hot, hot soil. All right. Not wet now, <laughs> kind of moist. Moist. Moist it down real good. Yeah. So we'll come here again and lay another one this side over here in there. Just to make sure. And I see how they look looking there? How they look? Oh, man, it's looking good, man. Huh? Are you for hire? You looking good, man. Oh, yeah, man. Anytime, man, you just about money, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we, we working together there. And so in there. So that look good there, so. Now, but while you're doing it, how long do you think that's going to, you know, take hold? Oh, it'll catch hold. And uh, you'll see it catching hold real good. It keeps some moisture on there. Mm -hmm. You don't want to keep it, you don't want to keep it wet. Okay. Keep it kind of more until it start catching on. And you can come out, you can come out here and, and pull on it. It'll be caught on. Okay. If it's hard to come up, that means it's it mean, like, taking root. Catching root. Okay. Mm -hmm. no, no, you know what? I'm getting tired. <laughs> 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 but that's good though, you know. That's a good exercise. So we got it down there real good. See that? See that there? You see now that don't go together. Right. You see how I look? Uh -huh. You can tell it don't fit like that. See, they just, no, that don't fit that gap. See, you see that big gap you got there? Yeah, that's too big a that's gap. That's too bad. No, what, right. what I do, I turn it around. Now, see, that, see that the that difference? Fit. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. huh? See, when you lay inside, they don't go out there and get it and put it any kind of way. Because it won't look good. <laughs> you got to fit it like a puzzle. Like a puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, you're right now. You know that, don't you? Like a puzzle. <laughs> now, I'm going to rig this out right here a little bit here. OK. Because that, that's kind of high there. Hold, you hold it for me a minute. You don't mind? Oh, yeah. Hold on. I'm going to rig that out there a little bit. Yeah, it's just kind of mud out here right now. Let not do more. I'm glad we didn't do a whole lot right now. So that, 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 that might be good something to show there too. Now, but we get this laid. When you get this sod laid, all of it laid real good. You want to roll this here, okay? You no, know, for it to fit in real good together. You no, know, we got a roller. We can roll it out and make sure it come in contact with the. Ground real good. Okay. Then so you, you want to get it even when you roll it. You want to get it even when you roll it. Yeah. You want to get it even when you roll it to make sure you kind of get everything together. Okay. And I think they look pretty good. To make sure you, the most important thing, don't have these seams running together. Have those seams, have those seams split, kind of lap like a pull like you said. Okay. You want to make sure you do it like that. Okay. I think they look real good, don't you? It's a good start, right? When you get through, man, you have a pretty, pretty yard in there. So I think that way you do that in that side. Two things you need to keep in mind. Do your soil test. Because right. the, the, the lime is the most important thing. If the pH is off, it's not going to take up the other nutrients in the soil. Okay. So you want to make sure that you are. Uh, so what does the lime do to the it, pH? It really helps the other okay. fertilizer be used up by the plant. Okay. The grass wouldn't use the other, pH, the other soil if the pH is off. Okay. So you make sure you do that soil test. And he did his soil test, came back low, like mine did. <laughs> <laughs> and he got, it, he got it fished in there.
All right, then, Booker, we definitely appreciate that demonstration. Okay. Can't wait you. to see what it looks like later on in the season. All right, then. All right. And welcome into the studios of Channel 10. I'm Chris Hardaway. In a moment, you'll meet Chris Cooper and a special guest. But right now, you are the important one. You need to use the number you see on your screen, 325-6565. Call this station with your support because great local shows like Family Plot are made possible in part by you, the viewers. This is viewer-supported TV, so we can't do it without your help. So make the telephone call now. Uh, if you're looking for great garden advice, this is the place to get it, but it's only going to stay here if you support it. Now let me entice you with some great gifts. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, that's a $60 one-time contribution, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. Plus, you'll be enrolled in Passport. Then at the $10 ongoing monthly, that's a sustaining membership, $120 for a one-time only contribution, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. This is a 550-page guide, tons of questions. Chris and his guests are going to tell you a lot more about it than I know in just a moment, but that's at the $10 a month level. And then at the $20 ongoing monthly gift, that's $240 one-time contribution, tickets for two to attend a taping of the Family Plot, plus the Garden Guide and the Trowel and Cultivator Set. Now this is a special opportunity. We have a limited number of seats for this taping event. So make your telephone call now and support this station and Family Plot with your dollars. Now let's go over to Chris and his guest. Thanks for being with us. We have a special guest here today, Mr. D. Glad to be here. Couldn't do the show without you. Hey, well, you do, <laughs> yes you can and you have. Uh, you guys do great when I'm not around. Oh, but it's fun to have you on. I enjoy doing it. It's actually, it, it's, it's uh, you know, I've done some TV work in other places. Okay. And this, this is by far the, the, the most enjoyable. You know, good. You, you got, you're, you're a professional. You do a really Appreciate good that. job with it, and you make it, you make it, you make it fun. And, and the folks behind the scenes, they correct all the mistakes we make. Yeah, they make it they look work really magic. Good. They work magic. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They're the miracle workers, right? They are. They are. All right. Well, look. Every gardener needs what? A couple of tools, right? Tools of the trade. Right tools there. of the Those trade. Are the right? basics, right? The there. cultivator. Mm -hmm. It's a trial. That's right. Cultivator is something I actually use a lot in my own garden. You know, it's good. You know, for you know, kind of smoothing the rows out a little bit is what I use it for, and to get those uh, shallow. You know, uh, rooted weeds as well. Right. You got to use one of those when you don't have a tractor. <laughs> okay. On the big Back and forth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. about the trial. I mean, what we've used this in the family park garden a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? Close in work. Mm -hmm. You know, you you don't do as much damage with that as uh, sometimes you do with a real big big shovel. Yeah, you can right. be you can be a lot more meticulous and, mm -hmm. and do a better job. Yeah, Joellen used it. You know, out front. The mm -hmm. flower bed. Uh, we use it a couple of times, you know, planting tomatoes and peppers and things like that's that. Right. And yeah, this is this is real handy. It is anybody handy. can use. That's right. What, what about cleaning this up though? That's oh, easy to clean up. It's plastic, <laughs> and you know you can wash all the dirt off of it, and you can actually uh, you can eat with it if you clean it oh, up. Oh, okay. Up. You know, eat your soup, and, and you know it, it, it's pretty good. That's uh, it works either yeah. way, right? And cereal. Yeah. <laughs> See, again, those are the things we talked about, just having fun, right? That's it, that's right. it. But again, you know, if you're a gardener, you definitely need, you know, these two tools, right? To Gotta get started off two. with. Gotta have those two. Right. And you know how soils are. I mean, this actually go through the soils here pretty good. That's right. Especially good soils. That's right. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, we do a little no-till, yeah. but, but you, gotta, you gotta have seed to soil contact. All right. Well, this will definitely get it done for that's you. It. That's right. All right, we'll be back more while Chris and Mr. D in just a moment, but right now you need to make the telephone call, go to your phone, pick up the phone, dial 325-6565 and support this station with your dollars so that great shows like Family Plot can continue. Now, earlier I mentioned monthly giving. It's called a sustaining membership and it's very simple to do. In the amount that you choose, and it could be anything, $5, $50, $500 a month, uh, will be deducted either through a credit card or an electronic bank draft system. So it's a great way of monthly giving. It spreads your cost out over the course of a monthly period and it's a nice sustaining income for us. So think about becoming a sustaining member as you look at the gifts that I'm offering. At the $5 ongoing monthly gift level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set, plus you're enrolled in Passport, more about that in a minute. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Garden Guide, a 550-page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club and contains everything, literally everything you need to know about gardening in the Mid-South, plus you'll get Passport in the member card. And then at the $20 ongoing monthly 
family level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot, plus the garden guide and the trowel and the cultivator set. Uh, very limited number of seats. This is going to take place on Saturday, August 18th of uh, this year. Uh, you'll get to meet Mr. Chris, uh, Mr. D, you Chris, Mr. D, and Joe Ellen Diamond, all here on set. So, there's plenty of reasons, three right there, that you should be making the telephone call and supporting the station. Back to Chris again. You know, Mr. D, one of the things about actually hosting this show, I travel a lot, right? And when I travel, people actually recognize me. Uh, for instance, I was in Tipton County here recently, and I was with uh, Joel and Diamond, uh, Dr. Natalie Baumgartner, uh, and some other folks, and we were actually, uh, you know, just walking to a restaurant for lunch there on the town square. So I walk in the door, and this lady's facing me, right? So once I hit the door, walk in, she's looking at me like this. I was like, uh-oh, here he comes, right? She's like, don't I know you from somewhere? And I always say, well, do you, really? <laughs> and she was like, you're Chris Cooper, you're that garden guy. It's like, yes, ma'am. So, of course, the lady's like, here we go again. Can't take, can't take Chris anywhere, right? So we actually go and sit down. The waitress comes over. You know, she comes over, you know, she's getting out water, and then she looks at me. She's like, hmm, okay, how you doing today? I said, I'm doing fine. She leaves, she comes back. She's still looking at me. She didn't say anything this time. She leaves, comes back again. She's like, are you that guy from that garden show? I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Then she turns around, it's like, well, you know what, you see that lady behind you with the camera? She had a camera phone. She wants to know if you can come over and take the picture with her. So I was like, oh yeah, I mean, I can do that. Selfie. Yeah, yeah, take a <laughs> selfie. So I actually took a selfie with her and she told me that uh, she actually invited her mom to have lunch with her that day and her mom told her she couldn't come. And guess what? Her mom loves the family plot. Uh -oh. So she missed out. Mm, missed out. <laughs> You have us in the similar stories? Yeah, that's, oh, I do, okay. I, I, a number of them. I, probably <laughs> the furthest, I travel a little bit in, mm -hmm. in my job too, and uh, one morning I was uh, at a, a hotel in uh, Athens, Alabama. Well, how about that? I'd been doing some work at uh, the uh, Belmont Auburn University uh -huh. Experiment Station that. down there, and um, I was sitting there and I noticed uh, this guy kept kind of staring at me, and I'm you know, I was, you know, feed my face, right. <laughs> and uh, and finally he came up and said, "You're Mr. D, aren't you?" And and so of course, you know, that is this is the only place I have that name. So right. When somebody right. asked me if I'm Mr. <laughs> D, I know why they're uh -huh. they're asking me that. Uh -huh. But I've been, you know, in restaurants in uh, Dyersburg area, up close to where I live, and you know, a number of times I've been approached by folks, and they all say they enjoy the show, mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, thank them. You know, I, I thank them as well. You know, it's a it's a good thing. All right. See, stories like that are important why you need to support public TV. We can't do it without your dollars, especially for local shows. They require your support. Local shows that are targeting local viewers. That's one thing that we want to do. And certainly Family Plot gives you all the information you need to help your garden grow. So if you enjoy this kind of show, you owe it to call 325-6565. Make the contribution. It's investing in your own entertainment and information enjoyment. Uh, I've mentioned Passport before. It's one of the little extras that we bring along to you. Uh, for every contribution of $60 or more, you will be enrolled in Passport. Now, Passport is literally, it's a digital gateway to thousands of public television shows online on your computer, on your smartphone, on your tablet, or on Apple TV. Uh, thousands of shows, everything from uh, our primetime lineup, Nature, Nova, Masterpiece Theater, American Experience, etc., all the way to our local shows and plenty more. Thousands of programs can be yours when you make that $60 plus contribution and enroll in Passport. So do that right now. One more time before we get out of the break and go back to more of the family plot, uh, I want to mention again the special taping that we're offering at the $20 gift level as an ongoing uh, uh, sustaining member. It's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot, plus you get the garden guide and the trowel and the cultivator set. Now this is a very special thank you gift. The taping takes place on Saturday, August 18th uh, this year. You'll get to meet Chris, Mr. D, and Joellen Diamond. Each pair of tickets will have an opportunity to ask a question and have it answered on the show. Now this is a limited pledge offer. We only have so many seats that we can accommodate here in the studio. So if you'd like to come to a taping and get all the rest of the gifts, then make that telephone call now, 325-6565, and support this station with your dollars. Remember, it is viewer-supported television, and we can't do it without your help.
All right, Mr. D, let's talk a little bit about grapes. Talk about grapes. Right. Okay. Uh, I guess first thing let's talk about is uh, the similarities that pretty much all grapes have in common. Okay. Uh, they need a, a fairly high pH, you know, uh, up around 6 pH, 6 to 7 pH is good for, for all grapes. And, okay. and the grapes we're talking about are the bunch type and the muscadine types. Mm -hmm. And there's several bunch types. Uh, out there, the American hybrids, the French hybrids, and, 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 and those kind. But um, they all, when you're planting them, the best time to plant them is, is in the uh, uh, late winter, early spring. Okay. Uh, don't plant them too early. You don't want to put them out there before you have a, a, you know, several real hard freezes. Right. Uh, you know, here in the Memphis area, I'd say, uh, you know, March, you know, late March, Mid to late March is a good time to plant okay. in the in the mid south area here. Uh, the uh, that is also the best time to prune them. Uh, you can go a little bit later on the pruning. Uh, when you prune them, if they're bleeding, a lot of people get concerned mm -hmm. when they're bleeding, but that's not a problem. Just the juice running out of the plant is, is not a problem. It's better to prune them. Uh, when they bleed a little bit, then to prune them, you know, too early or in the fall. You do not want to prune them in the fall. You you don't want to plant or prune within 48 hours of a hard freeze. If a hard freeze is forecast within the next 48 hours, wait until after that freeze occurs, okay. and then get Makes on out sense. there and, and 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 plant and prune. So, what's the difference between grapes and muscadines, though? A muscadine is a type of grape. Okay. A muscadine is a grape. But it, the muscadine is a type of grape, okay. and uh, and the, the muscadine types are uh, types that do well in the summertime. They're more native to to, to a lot of the country because I mean muscadines are native to here in the Memphis area. I, there were wild muscadines yeah. growing on Mud Island. Um, uh, of course, there's also a lot of non-native plants mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> growing, growing around also. But uh, um, in the South, the muscadine types mm. tend to do better, in my opinion. Uh, and there are several different muscadine types out there. Uh, let me go over uh, some of the varieties there. Right. Right. <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, and these are varieties that have been around for a long time. Okay. Uh, I was recommending these back when I worked in, in Mobile County back in the in the 80s and 90s. But Hunt, Scuppernong, Carlos, Pride, Nesbitt. Uh, Golden Isle, Triumph, Magnolia, Cowart, those are all muscadine varieties that have been around a long time. Now, you know, I mentioned Scuppernong. Yeah, uh, some know. folks think that all muscadine, they call all muscadines Scuppernongs. Well, Scuppernong is just one variety of muscadine. It's a female mm. bronze variety. Muscadines come in either black, they're either dark, Colored and uh, and or bronze. Okay. Now there are <clears throat> there are two types of muscadines. There the the female types require cross pollination. They require a perfect flowered type to pollinate them. The perfect flowered type, on the other hand, is completely self fruitful. So of the ones I mentioned, uh, one, two, three of them are females and the rest of them are perfect flowered types. So you can, uh, there are some very good publications out there. Mm -hmm. You can get on, go to your local extension office. The one I'm reading from here is a publication entitled uh, Tree Fruit and Small Fruit Cultivars for Tennessee. And I know you've got them at the uh -huh. local extension yeah. office. Dr. Dave Lockwood put it together. There are another couple of uh, good publications. Uh, one is Grape Growing in Tennessee. Uh, this is, for, if you're interested in getting into business and growing grapes for wine or commercially, this is about a 30-page publication. Also, Dr. Lockwood put it together, and it's a good one. And then, so you want to grow grapes in Tennessee. It's <laughs> so another good publication it, for growing them in uh, Tennessee. Now, if you're not, if you live in Mississippi or North Carolina or Florida or someplace like that, go to your local extension sure. office and, and talk to your local county agent and get the, get the information there. There are a lot of vineyards, you know, popping up around. There are. There are a lot, the of, vineyards, a lot of vineyards out there. Mm -hmm. But let me let me go back and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some of the uh, other types okay. of grapes, sure. bunch types. There's the American bunch, uh, and then there are seedless and hybrid grapes. Uh, there are uh, Vitus vinifera grapes, which are pretty much grown primarily for wine. And uh, 
uh, different colors of fruit, red, blue, white on, on the bunch types. Uh, they're used for wine mm. or they're used for table grapes, mm -hmm. you know, for eating. Some do better for, for jellies and juices and things like that. Again, these publications right. tell, you, tell you all about that. Okay. Are per they considered the, the bunch grapes, are they, are they perfect flowered, female flowered, or most of them the self-fruitful? They're all self-fruitful. They're so, all self-fruitful. So that would mean okay. they're, they have, you they're perfect. You don't have to worry about getting... Right. You, you don't have to That's worry good. about You can have one vine. That's right. You, you can have one set vine. Uh, and that's you can good. Have, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Very good point. Small mm -hmm. yards, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and that is something yeah, homeowners that, that's, yeah. they want yeah. to try it. Uh -huh. right? And that is something that's important to consider because if you grow muscadines, uh, it's recommended that you plant them 20 feet apart. Wow. Yeah, they take a lot of space. That because they'll have a 10 foot runner uh -huh. and you'll have mm -hmm. to, you'll have to it prune it right. to 10 feet because it's, wanna go, it's gonna wanna go 20 feet. And so you'll have within the row, 20 feet apart on muscadines, and then you want your rows 12 to 15 feet apart. So it takes a lot of space if you're growing muscadines. Yeah. Uh, not real good in a small, uh, uh, you know, zero, you know, backyard, a small yeah. backyard. The bunch type grapes don't require quite as much space. Uh, you can put them, you know, eight to 10 feet within the row and, and because they're not quite as aggressive as uh -huh. the muscadine types. Uh, you still probably need to leave, you know, 10, 12 feet between the rows. But um, uh, the, another, another thing that they have in common is, is uh, they all uh, fruit on current season's growth that came out of one-year-old wood. Okay. And so it's important to prune them. Don't mm -hmm. wait three or four years, especially if you have uh, uh, the muscadine types that are... Uh, they're very, very, you know, they, they grow a lot. They grow fast. Yeah. Uh, it's important to prune them uh, annually. Uh, and you can take off most of last year's growth. You can prune them back to two or three buds. You know, just follow that long runner all the way back uh -huh. and have two or three nodes yeah. or two yeah. or three buds <laughs> right. yeah. and, and yeah. cut it off. And so you'll leave a little stub there. Yeah. And so that's your one-year-old wood. And, and the growth that comes out of those buds uh, will be the current season's growth that you'll fruit on. Now, if you go all the way back to the main stem, then the new growth that comes out is going to be coming out of what? Two, oh, yeah, two. Yeah, older that's wood, right. two or three year old wood. Right. Yeah. Will it right. fruit? No. Yeah. You will have a beautiful vine. It'll be big <laughs> and it'll be green and it'll do, do real well. So it's important to leave a little bit of, of little last bit, year's okay. growth when you prune them back. There are a lot of different trellis systems that you can use for grapes. Uh, uh, you can have a, this, one of the simplest is a single wire, which is, you know, a post with a mm -hmm. single wire going across the top. Uh, you can have a double wire system, which has a single wire going across a post that's like, you know, five feet tall and then about a couple of feet mm -hmm. lower, another wire under there, and you, you have a double wire system. Uh, there's a Geneva double curtain, which kind of looks like my mother's, uh, 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 Clothesline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's got. It's got. It's yeah. really got three wires. It's got uh, a wires going out on the end of the Geneva double curtain system, and then one going along the top of the the post uh, to kind of. Uh, uh, and that, but that's the Geneva double curtain, and it's probably the most popular. It exposes more of that plant to sunlight than than any other type. Than just doing the straight right. up. Couple of wires. Right. You can yeah. plant your plants and put in the trellis system after you plant them if you want to, or you can go ahead and put your trellis system in first, and then and then. Uh, uh, but you're going to have to have a trellis system. Got to have a trellis grapes. system. Are there any major diseases of grapes that we need to know about? There are. There are uh, probably the number one disease that if if you if you grow grapes, you need to go to your local extension office and get the uh, home orchard spray right. guide, and we'll have a section on on diseases and black rot is by far the most common fungal disease. It shows up as a coppery spot on the leaf and uh, it causes the grapes to turn black and shrivel up mm -hmm. and, and they're not any good. And that's probably the most uh, common problem. It, it affects both bunch type and muscadine types but, but probably more so on the bunch yeah. type than on the muscadine type. Uh, the bunch type uh, some of them uh, have, are, are, are susceptible to a disease called Pierce's disease, which spends part of its life cycle on a grape and part of it on a peach tree. It's phony peach on peach mm -hmm. trees. 
It's rickettsia type organism spread by leaf hoppers. Okay. And once they get it, it's you, know, you, you just got to take them out. Wow. You know, the, the, the plants do not survive either phony peach on a peach tree or, or, or uh, uh, the Pierce's disease in grapes. Uh, muscadines do not get that. Yeah. Uh, but and, and a lot of and several of the newer varieties of the bunch types are resistant to Pierce's disease. They have some resistance to that. But but powdery mildew is yeah. another problem. And you know your 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 fungicide that mm -hmm. you that you go by uh, that you if you put your grapes on a spray schedule should take care of of, of those kind of things. Uh, insects. Yeah, that's going to be the next question. Insects, insects not normally pests. much of a problem on grapes. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure a stink bug if he goes. Oh, uh, sure, you know, yeah. but, sure. But uh, the also Japanese beetles. Japanese yeah. beetles, beetles yeah. like that. Yeah, you know, they, they, know. yeah they, can, they eat everything. They That's can right. Be a problem. Yeah. That's right. Uh, but uh, again, no, no, nothing preventative uh, that you would need to do on grapes. If you have a problem, you can go out there and try to d deal with it. You know, scout. You know, okay. keep an eye on them. What about any critters running around there? You know, not Deer not aware. I, like you know, that. not okay. like strawberries that have okay. thing. You know, critters that get out there and, and work on them. And deer that walk across <laughs> them and mess up the plastic and eat them and and all that. I and I'm sure deer, probably if you have a very high population, would 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 work on you a little bit. But but just not not a lot of not a lot of problems okay. with, with grapes on with insects and critters and things like that. Oh, well, we appreciate that, Mr. D. Good stuff. Okay. Appreciate that. Time to side dress the corn. You don't typically side dress corn when it gets about a foot tall, about knee high, a little less than knee high. We have some varying sizes here. Some of this corn has been more successful at grabbing fertilizer than the other. So we're going to try to equal things up a little bit. General rule of thumb on the amount of uh, side dress nitrogen, and nitrogen is the only element you need to apply in a side dress. We've already taken care of the phosphorus and potassium needs out here. Uh, uh, is one pound, uh, 16 ounces, uh, 3400 per 100 foot of row. We calculated we have about 80 foot of row here. So 12.8 uh, ounces split into two right here. I'm going to try to put a half out at a time. And uh, 3400 goes a long way. So you want to be as even with your application as you can. Uh, uh, if you have you put it out too heavy in some places, you can actually cause a burn. Now I'm going to apply the other half. I want the fertilizer to go on the ground, not on the plant, because it can actually burn the foliage if you get it on the foliage. Well, that should give us the nitrogen that we need, should need to make a good crop of sweet corn. All right, Miss Melissa. Drip irrigation. Oh, it is so exciting. I can tell you're already excited about <laughs> I it. I am so excited about this. Drip irrigation is the process of putting water where you want it, when you want it, and how much you want okay. it. So what we're gonna talk about today is how to take it basically from, the, from your house, from a pond, from anywhere you have a water source, to getting it to your plants. Okay. And so I wanna show you first, if you have a water source, we're gonna be coming off of a, a utility here at the gardens and we're not going to be too concerned about a regulator because on our timer, um, we have a filter that has a little filter on mm -hmm. it. We have a timer. We're going to regulate the water based on a little knob that we're going to have on our hose. Okay. We're not going to worry too much about that. I would highly recommend a timer because I hate going out <laughs> at 7 o'clock in the morning and trying to time my water. Okay. But I highly recommend, you can buy these timers, you can buy regulators, everything I'm showing you, you can get pretty much any, any drug um, hardware store yeah. anywhere in the Mid-South. Okay. So, Is it relatively inexpensive or it just oh, depends on how much you're gonna buy? It is very inexpensive, okay. very inexpensive. Okay. Cheaper than probably a garden hose. Oh, how about once that, you, all right. <laughs> once you really get rolling okay. with it. But I would recommend a timer. So first thing you gotta have is you gotta have your half inch pipe. Okay. Now, inch. half inch pipe is your main hose that you're going to take off your garden hose. And I want to show you how easy it is to put this sucker together. I have what's called a female fetter. And you take this and you have a little, see the little um, knob there? Okay. You're going to 
push this into here like this and I love this because I can do it uh. I'm, I'm, a lady can do this right. you put that in and then you twist it till it comes and it wraps around it and so now that's nice and tight so that's put together mm -hmm. All right, and the lady did that. The yeah, lady it did that. Tight. It's okay. on there tight, tight. yeah. It sure is. So then you come back and you put it against your water source. And see, it's got all the, and there's even a washer in there. Okay. So I don't have to care about the washer. And then you put it on there like that. And that takes care of the one end. Right. And then what I want to do is I'm going to thread this and what do you have to think about if you're going to put this in your flower garden your butterfly garden you got to think about how long do you need this half inch hose you don't have to cover as you see I made it long enough to go all the way to the end of this garden which is fine so now you got to think about okay I got to close that water off okay so how do I do that? There's three ways to close that water off. If you think that you're going to extend that water into uh, another bed at one point in time, you have a connector like this. You can put it on the same way where you turn it down, go over that little okay, nodule. Just like the last one. Just like the last okay. one. The beauty of this is it has a cap hmm. and it comes off. So again, you could connect another hose to it or another half inch okay. pipe to it. We're not gonna put that on this one. Okay. You also have what's called an eighth <laughs> where you can just fold it over like so. And it'll fit there like that okay. and then undo it. But for this particular one, we're going to use our trusty wire tie. Got to keep those handy, right? Oh, you got to have your wire ties. And once you get the wire tie on, and it's like any hose, right. once you get that bent, you're locked down. I'm going to hold this down because you're going, how do you, how do you hold the black hose uh -huh. down to keep it out of the way? I'm going to hold this down just a little bit. All right, I've got my black piping in place. Now I need to think about how do I get water to my plants. Okay. We have three peppers here mm -hmm. and we have three tomatoes. Now we know with tomatoes, they really don't like water on their leaves. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, right? <laughs> <laughs> peppers don't really care. Okay. You got thousands of different kind of sprinkler heads that you can use and you got Bukus of risers, and these are called risers. Okay. You can get them all which ways. I even have one here we're going to actually attach to our flower garden. Okay. That is a container bed riser, and it puts the water specifically down. Now comes the fun part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my quarter inch pipes in. Now the way that is, is you have, a, if you're going to do this a lot, I would recommend getting a hole punch. Okay, that's a hole punch. It's a hole punch. And it's going to cut only a hole big enough to be a quarter inch. I'm always kind of guessing where I might want to put a hole. So I make a hole and I always have to kind of do it and then I kind of measure. Well, that's not really where I want to put it. So I had this nifty little thing called a goof plug. Uh -huh. And so I take this tiny little goof plug and I just put plug it, it back. Just plug it back. Okay. I get a little click and I'm going, well, water's going to come through that thing. So I move my hole over. Make my hole. Okay. Then I have these connectors. These are, they got a hole through both of them. Okay. I take the quarter inch piping, put it through there, and I'm gonna go to a tomato. 
So the way this particular riser is, there's the hole where the water goes. Okay. And the water comes out here. I got you. So come to this, put it down in there. I put my here a little click, fill a little click. And the nice thing about this is it's got an arrow. You're gonna yeah, see we'll you know <laughs> which way it goes. Yeah. That's why we call it goofy. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you put it right down here at the root of the plant. And that water is only going to go to where that, to the root of that plant. Okay. Now, you noticed I made that a lot longer. What if I decide, well, that plant died. It's not doing too well. I need to move it. You can move these things. So you don't really need a lot of half inch pipe as much as you need your quarter inch pipe. Put that in there. And then this head is called a bubbler head. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of a bubbler sprayer depending on how much water you put to it. The beauty of this is you can regulate it at the I head. Dial it, okay. Which I love, because okay. depending on how much water you need and how far you need that water to go, you can change it here. So again, good. take this, and can you hand me one of those little connectors? One yeah, of one of those. I'm learning. All right. Connector. You put this together like that. Now this one, the water comes up from the side. Okay. Get the right end. The nice thing about doing it on a hot day today is all this plastic PVC works beautifully because okay. it's hot enough and it works well. So you make another hole. Punch it all the way through. Push it in until it clicks. Uh -huh. and there you go. There's some hard dirt there. Mm -hmm. Now, this will eventually lay down once it gets settled. Uh, you can have it behind, right up here against the wood, okay. so it's hidden. So if you have a flower garden and you don't want all this black showing, you can put it up against the wood. Mm -hmm. You can also lay mulch over it and it won't be seen. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Now, let me put in the rest of them because I've got all sorts of other ones right here. All right, let's give it a shot. All see right, if it works. let's try it. All right. All right. Let's see water. Hey. All right. hey, hey. All right, that one's working. That one's working. Yeah, right. this one's working. All right, that's doing what it's supposed to. That one's getting a little crazy, all right. but that's all right. Because it can't be adjusted, right? It can be, be adjusted. adjusted, yep. I haven't used this one in a while, but you can see how all these tomato plants, it's all staying down by them. This one's swirling like it's supposed to. This one's bubbling like it's supposed to. Okay. And all that water is staying right there underneath the it tomatoes, sure is. which is what we wanted. How about that? You got an irrigation we system. We have an irrigation system. You sure do. Yep. Well, we appreciate that, Miss Melissa. You are more than welcome. Thank you much. And welcome back to the studio. Chris Hardaway along with Chris Cooper and Mr. D. You'll meet them in just a moment. But right now, you're the important one. Call us, 325-6565, to support this station and its great programming. If you enjoy the family plot, if you enjoy all the great how-to programs that have been on public TV over the years, this old house, it's still around, all these great shows, the cooking shows, if you enjoy this kind of programming, then it's up to you to help keep it on Channel 10 because it's viewer-supported TV. We can't do it without you. So make the telephone call now and support this station with your dollars, especially local shows like The Family Plot. Again, we're targeting this local area with this great gardening advice. Now, there are some shows on national TV, but they don't target this local area the way a show like The Family Plot can. So 
If you enjoy it, if you use the information, support us with your dollars. Let me go over all the gifts very quickly. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set, plus your enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide, plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. It's a 550-page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club. And last, at the $20 ongoing gift level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of The Family Plot on Saturday, August 18th of this year. Uh, this is a very special thank you gift. It also includes the garden guide, the trial, and the cultivator set. Limited number of these, so if you want to attend the taping, get on the phone right now. Let's go over to Chris Cooper and Mr. D. I'll tell you what, Mr. D, time really flies when you're having fun. Doesn't it, though? I can remember getting a phone call, you know, some years back now from Sally Stover, actually works here, and she told me they were thinking about piloting a gardening program, and they were looking for a host for this program, and she's like, guess what, your name has come up several times, so we would like for you to come over to the studio and sit down with our producer, at that time it was Amy, yeah. and, uh, you know, see what you think about doing this, I was like, wow, I mean, my name actually came up to host the show, um, I've done a lot of presentations, I never hosted, you know, a gardening show, I've been on TV a couple of times, you know, Booker. Uh, yeah. program yeah. and such but man I was just you know just humble just overwhelmed with joy uh, of getting this opportunity to do this so uh, and here we are still to yeah. today how'd you I how'd you manage to get over here with I us? I remember that I think I think I was on one of the first shows mm -hmm. if not the first yeah. show and uh, I that was about the time that I retired I, was. I think I was back on board working half time you know on a half time appointment mm -hmm. um, but uh, I, I noticed you did a great job it seemed to be a natural at it and and then we got a lot of good feedback, oh, great a lot feedback. of good feedback from folks, and and uh, in you know in our line of work, any way that we can mm -hmm. deliver good research-generated mm -hmm. information, right? Uh, it's good. It's a good thing, and, right. and this was a, another avenue and a fairly unique one. You know. Right. I mean, it's a good way for us to market extension. You think about it, because exactly. the first show that we ever did, we actually talked about extension service, and we did a soil test. You actually did that for Don't us. Don't guess soil test. Don't guess soil test. That's what we've been preaching for a long time <laughs> and this was another good venue to, to do that. Yeah, soil test is something you should always do anyway, right? That's right, you got to. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's been an experience I keep thinking, you know, I, I, I repeat, I retired. Yeah, you retired. About that many years ago <laughs> and I'm still retired. Yeah, you still are. Sort of, but uh, well, so. I appreciate you being with us. <laughs> Thank you. All right, back to you, Chris. Well, we're glad that Mr. D isn't totally retired and that he's here on Family Plot giving us the information. So make the telephone call to support this station and its great programming. You know, one of the great benefits, sort of a under the uh, radar benefit, uh, is the member card. For every contribution of $75 or more, you can get this member card, which entitles you to two-for-one savings at a lot of locations throughout the area, restaurants, lodgings, uh, various benefits but we've just added some interesting ones if you happen to be a gardener because we've got two for one, or we've got discount deals at Tri-State Irrigation, at Bartlett Nursery, at Classic Lawns and Organic Services, among many others. Uh, home and garden benefits for you on the member card. Just make the telephone call, support us with your dollars, 325-6565. Also, don't forget about giving on a monthly basis. It's called a sustaining membership. Whatever amount you choose, you give to us monthly, it's done simply through an electronic bank draft or can be done on your credit card. So whatever amount you choose, uh, it's easy on you because obviously uh, it spreads those dollars out across a number of months. It helps us because we get a sustaining source of income. Plus, on your end of things, you never have to worry about renewing because it's auto renewing. So make the telephone call 325-6565 and become a sustaining member. One more time on the gifts, let me review them. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set plus your enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly uh, gift level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. 550 page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club, lots of great information. Plus you're also enrolled in Passport and that member card I just mentioned. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's tickets for two to attend a taping of the family plot on Saturday, August 18th. You'll also get the garden guide and the trial and the cultivator set. And you get to ask questions once you get to the studio. So this is a limited offer. Make the telephone call now and get it. Let's go back over to Chris. All right, Mr. D. Let's talk about some of your favorite shows. Do you have a couple that actually come to oh, mind? Oh, it's a lot of them. I mean, <laughs> you know, all of them are good. Oh, yeah, I enjoy are. all of them. It's enjoyable. I, I don't ever remember leaving with a bad feeling. Oh, good. But I'm an animal science 
uh -huh. at, you know, animal science training is my basic training. I think I know where you're going. And so if they've got critters, and, and I think uh, probably my favorite is, is uh, with Rick Pudwell, we uh -huh. brought the chickens. That's right. And we had the crowing rooster. Uh, I remember that. Uh, and and that, was, that was just pretty neat. I felt right at home. You know, the roosters crowing in the background, that's just like I grew up. Man. I woke up every morning to roosters crowing. Uh, then some of the other uh, with critters, uh, you know, I don't like possums, but uh, Andy brought the possum. Andy brought a possum. What about the snake? Remember that time he brought the snake? Yeah, he brought snakes. I don't particularly care oh, for snakes. They're not very lovable. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I like and uh, enjoy those those kind of shows. I actually liked. Uh, we actually tagged some uh, butterflies. I thought those were a pretty neat show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I like all of the demonstrations. You know, we went out to Jones Orchard one time. Right. Yeah, it was really. That's we cool. actually, you know, pruned some uh, peach trees. Pruned some peach trees. Too. I saw it different. Like those. Uh, anytime we're out in the family plot, you know, garden. I like those demos. All as the well. hands on stuff. Mm, all the hands on I enjoyed stuff. it. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit more than just standing up mm -hmm. and, and saying something. When you can demonstrate it and mm -hmm. actually, you know, get your hands a little dirty, I think that that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it is good. I'll tell you something else too, though. What about the cooking shows? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> always a flavor. Oh, well, we've had some pretty good meals, uh, you know. Never, never shows, had right? anything bad. Even the vegetarian stuff was good. Because you know, we know I'm, you like the meat, right? I always ask where the beef. Where's the beef? But. Uh, uh, they, the folks know what they're doing. They know what they're doing, but it's yeah. always, uh, you know, it's always fun. You know, anytime, because uh, again, we learned a lot, you know, from all of our, you know, guests that have been on the show. So it's always a good time. Yeah, you know, I've got things in my landscape that I planted because How of about that? guests on the show. Are you actually planting flowers, blooming flowers? I, I sure have. I, and you know, I don't do much of that kind of stuff. I know you I don't. That's why I'm surprised you said that. Yeah, I don't plant a lot of things I can't eat. <laughs> but uh, every once in a while, I'll stick something in the ground that I can't eat. All right. And speaking of can't eat, there are some, um, you know, hostas and hydrangeas. I, I remember one of those shows you actually taking a lot of notes. That's right. You know, and I, like I, I have some oak leaf hydrangeas yeah, that I, I planted that. because of that. And and you know, I can't. I haven't gotten any fruit off of them right. or vegetables off of them yet. And uh, so, you know, I do those for my wife. All right. I do that for Laura. And back to you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I want to remind you, this is a great how-to show. You need to support it. Where else are you going to get gardening tips like this except on Channel 10 and on the Family Plot? So if you value that, again, it's viewer supported TV, can't do it without your help. So if you want more tips, make the telephone call. Speaking of tips, I, I want to tell you coming up in the next segment, it's a question and answer. So stay tuned for that one. But right now, make the telephones ring. Don't forget about that book. You're talking about how-tos at the $10 ongoing monthly level. Uh, the book can be yours. It's a 550 page guide published by the Memphis Garden Club. It contains uh, sections covering vegetables, shrubs, trees, lawns, and lots more. This book is valuable. Chris Cooper himself says he uses it, so you know it's valuable. Make the telephone call now, 325-6565. We've talked about Passport before. As a matter of fact, when you call and get that book, you'll be enrolled in Passport. Uh, this is a digital gateway to thousands, literally thousands of public television shows, including local programs. And you can watch it on your smartphone, on your tablet, uh, on your computer, or on Apple TV. So, make that telephone call, contribute $60 or more, $5 uh, uh, ongoing uh, monthly, and you can have uh, the key to Passport. One of the other great benefits of Channel 10 is our ability to reach out in the community, and we're doing that with PBS Kids. PBS Kids is its own channel, 24-7, broadcasting 24-7 of children's programming, children's entertainment and informational programming. And it's made possible in part by you. It's the way we reach out into the community and make sure that our children are ready to learn. And you help make that possible. So thanks for your support and continue that support no matter where you live. If you take a look at our broadcast area, I don't care where you are in our broadcast area, you're part of our family. So make that telephone call 325-6565 as we go back to more of The Family Plot. All right, here's our Q&A session. Y'all ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun, right? <clears throat> All right. We're so, ready to roll. All right, good. Here's our first letter here. Okay. I am writing concerning my neighbor's pecan trees. She has several paper shell trees. Last year, about half the kernels were half filled. The rest were empty. What should you do to get the full pecan shells? 
she has a good crop, but not much fruit is in the shell. And this is Miss, Miss Maggie. And guess what? She's 95 years old My right goodness. here in Memphis. Wow. Isn't that cool? All right. So the question again, what should you do to get full pecan shells? We're going to start with Mr. D. Mr. Yeah. D knows all about pecans, Dr. <laughs> Kelly. Y'all well, right. Yeah. I can... Uh, I'll bet Miss Maggie <laughs> has been watching that pecan tree, and I've got a feeling <laughs> that every year that it has a big crop like that, the same it has the same problem. It's probably a variety called Mahan, M-A-H-A-N, Mahan, oh, and they are a beautiful pecan. People love them. They're like almost you know two inches long. Great old big, you see that and you think, oh wow, you know, you don't have to have a lot of those to make a pecan pie. <laughs> the only problem with them is when they, especially when they have a, if they have a medium to heavy crop, they don't have enough ability to fill that pecan out. Uh. Very, very few years have I seen a Mahan pecan filled out. Usually, about the only time they will ever fill out is if they have just a small number of pecans on the tree. All right. 25 or so. Oh, you wow. Know, very Man. small. A very small. That's small. <laughs> well, right. unless you want to get up there and pick all but the green mouth. pecans <laughs> off. You yeah, know, get your big stick. Yeah, well, and, the, and there are a lot of years, there are quite a few years you don't have that good a pecan crop. Now, there are other problems that can that, that, that aggravate that. All right. Pecan scab is the number one disease uh, in pecans in the that. southeast okay. United States. Mahan is susceptible uh -huh. to pecan scab, very susceptible. And so it interferes, you know, it, you get black spots on the leaves and it interferes with photosynthesis. Uh -huh. And so that aggravates the situation too. So if you have a wet year, you know, we had a yeah. wet year this year. Uh -huh. So pecan scab was very heavy this year. Okay. I'm sure that this is in a home situation and it wasn't a in a commercial situation, if you have a few mayhounds out there, you can, you can control right. the insects and diseases. You can, you can do fertilizer. You know, I mean, you fertilize and you can irrigate and you can do all the kind of things, and that helps. But even in a commercial situation, they don't know. Wow. Not, I don't know of any commercial growers that grow mayhounds. I don't know of a single oh. one that grow mayhounds. They, they, they grow other varieties that will fill out. In, in, uh, Anything that's not really not good news, probably not. Yeah, Miss Maggie, I'm sorry. Yeah. Maggie, right. uh, and uh, you know, uh, I just, unless you want to get out there and kind of shoot them off, maybe with a BB gun or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, she <laughs> says half of them were half filled, so maybe that's a pretty good crop. <laughs> yeah, oh, and, you know, and the I half mean, that's in there is okay. It's okay, it's a, yeah. So it's, it's, it's good to eat. Yeah. It's edible, right? So, right. So, you know, so but the thing maybe about it, you got a shell. Or, and they're just not going to, if it is Mahan, which it sounds like it is, that she's just never going to get the crop that every nut is perfect. Right. right. Yeah. You know, and there's other things. Anything on a pecan tree that causes defoliation, like, I mean, webworms. Mm -hmm. They get, you know, if you get mm -hmm. webworms and pecans. Black pecan or, aphid. Yeah, cause the leaves to fall off. Right. I mean, you're going to get a weak crop because there's no leaves to right. make the sugars that help make the fruit. So, Makes sense. You know, the pecan and it filling out, as we call it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Miss Megan, we appreciate it. And tell your neighbor. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here's our next viewer email. Would you recommend using pine straw or shredded hardwood for mulching around your plants? What do you think about that? <laughs> well, I think either one's all right. Either it kind of yeah. It yes. kind of depends on the the area and the conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, pine straw is usually or I mean, uh, this was like yeah, pine straw. Yeah, pine straw. Pine mm -hmm. straw is. It doesn't wash, mm -hmm. so if you've got a place that it tends to wash, you would rather have the pine straw. But now the the bark is fine. You know, it's very de both of these are very decorative mm -hmm. to me. Of course, the pine straw is going to break down quicker, uh -huh. so you'd okay. have to maybe replenish it more often. But they're both very very pretty mulches, and the the pine bark or the bark or hardwood shredded hardwood is fine too. But it wants to tend to float away. But it stays longer. It's, if it's not going to float away, it'll stay there longer <laughs> than the pine straw. Mm -hmm. So either's fine. Yeah, either's really. fine. Good organic yeah. material, both. Yeah, yeah. Right. Which can be used by the soil. Right. And soil. some people are concerned about affecting pH with, yeah. with that. But that's a long, you know, that's sort of a minor long term thing, I think. And really not a big deal. Yeah, because there's always the question about using pine straw around yeah. azaleas. Yeah, right. exactly. Rhododendrons and things right. like that. Right, right. Okay. All right, here's our next viewer email. Why are my Sheffalera plant leaves turning brown and falling off? And of course, the Sheffalera is going to be a houseplant. Yeah, for the most yeah, part. yeah. Right. 
Yeah, if I've actually had one, it did that. Oh, good. good. I did. Yeah, I knew what I was doing to it. <laughs> and I was like, you know, it's just gotten too tall, and I don't like it. It's too heavy. But it, the Chef Lara's are really susceptible to root rot, mm -hmm. especially in the interior. If you drag them out, you know, and put them out under a big shade tree in the summer, they're a little easier. But when you get them inside and you've got maybe not the right kind of light, you're overwatering, so you get root rot. You've got all kind of foliar diseases that can come in that cause brown leaves, black leaves. Mm -hmm. They'll throw them off. And so, you know, you need to, I guess, one of the main things, you, and you can treat them, you know, but that's kind of hard to do inside. Yes, so indoors, the best yeah. thing in the beginning is to maintain that plant as healthy as you can, mm -hmm. get it in the right light situation. Don't overwater yes. because you'll give it the root rot. And one of the first symptoms of that is wilting and throwing of leaves when that happens. Mm -hmm. And if it's to a stage that it's lost more than two thirds of its leaves, you might as well chunk it, <laughs> you know, and go buy another one or buy something that's made out of plastic or something. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're kind of picky about being overwatered right. mainly. Yeah, I think that's part of the biggest problem. Uh, with I would them. think so. D yeah. Direct sunlight or indirect sunlight? It'd be indirect. indirect. Yeah, yeah. Right. They they really don't that. like. They'll burn with a little in, with direct, direct sunlight. Right. But yeah. Cause those brown leaves for sure. Yeah. All right, Mr. D. Anything to add to that? No. Okay. All right, here's our next via email. Okay, I live in the Caribbean, it's an area with no real winter. <laughs> Are there any types of flower bulbs that don't require winter chill? And this is from Marisa via YouTube. Yeah. Don't yeah, require yeah, any. Yeah, there, there is. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. they have no real winter no, in the Caribbean, yeah. right? And they can grow paper whites. Uh -huh. I'm assuming when they say bulbs, I mean, in, in my mind, they were thinking spring. Like daffodils, uh, right. would you have thought that? I, I thought the same the thing. The daffodils, right. the crocus, and the tulips are typical traditional spring blooming, uh -huh. you know, bulbs. And I thought, yeah, they can grow amaryllis. Amaryllis is what they I thought. They can grow sure. paper white mm -hmm. because both of those plants are native to the Middle East, mm -hmm. which is what makes them go dormant or their blooming cycle is wet, dry. Ah. Wet dry. Wet dry. Okay. Not cold temperatures, chilling temperatures like the, the buttercups need and the crocus need and the tulips. They okay. need, a, and hyacinths need, you know, a period of cold treatment before they will flower. Well, paper whites and amaryllis do not. You know when you buy those little kits, you know what makes them start flowering is you start watering them. Right. Right. They come mm -hmm. out of that mm -hmm. dormancy and bloom. And then, you know, so that would be one thing. Now, they would have to manipulate the water to make them go dormant, okay. you know, in the Caribbean. So if they want to grow them as pot plants, and what I do with my amaryllis, after they flower, I'll let the foliage come on out and grow because it needs the foliage to be there for a while to okay. make the nutrients, to make the bulb that's going to make the flowers next year. And then at the end of the summer, or whenever they want to do it in the Caribbean because they're summer all the time, <laughs> is just turn them on their side in the pot and dry them out and just stick them somewhere. Huh. Yeah, so I'll just throw them in my garage in the wintertime. Of course, the wintertime is when you do it. There's others too, crinum lilies. Yeah, I was going to ask you about lilies. Uh, yeah, sure. crinum yeah. lilies, uh, gladiola. Okay. You know, same thing. So yeah. they have some choices. So there's some choices there. Yep. All right, Farisa, there you have it. Yeah, actually have some choices. Yeah. yeah. Well, no real winner. How about that, y'all? <laughs> All right, here's our next video email. He said, anything I could do to stop squirrels from eating my tomatoes this year? Don't grow they tomatoes. They frustrated me oh. last year. And this is from Miss Dixie right here in Memphis. All right, Mr. D, give it to us. <laughs> Same as always, 12-year-old with a 20-gauge, man. That'll do the trick. That'll do the trick. Yeah. yeah oh, I, mean, man. I know squirrel season's not open when your tomatoes are getting no. right. And I, <laughs> TWRA, I guess you can come and get me. But I think a farmer has the right to protect his crop. <laughs> you know, uh, and you don't have to kill them, just burn them. If you burn them a few times, they'll maybe, you know, You mean not like come a back. torch? Or <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about with bird shot. Bird, yeah, yeah. Bird, yeah. Ah, man, that is tough, you know. Yeah, that uh, is tough. I don't know of anything that, that will keep squirrels from getting your nice homegrown tomato. It would be so um, hard. Yeah, I have more trouble with mockingbirds pecking mine. Yeah. Okay. They'll just I've pick heard that a little before. bite yeah, out of the red that. ones mm -hmm. and then go on and do another one. I don't understand why they can't just peck one. You know, one thing you, you know, might try. Peck here. Yeah. Uh, my sister in Carothersville is, has blueberry bushes, and okay. the only way she's been able to keep the birds from getting all of her is blueberries is she's cover. got the yeah. netting, mm -hmm. the bird netting. Yeah. yeah. 
You might try that some kind yeah. of netting like that mm -hmm. over your tomatoes. It's got to be good because squirrels can dig and yeah. you know, they're tough. Yeah. They can tear stuff apart. Oh boy! But you might try that. You know. Is you, there any kind of like decoy thing that squirrels are afraid of? What are they afraid of? Twelve-year-olds with a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> you got one of them decoys. Oh that man! Might be a okay, they're afraid but, of that. Uh, but I, I don't think you know, you, I've tried like a owls. snake or a little um, rat terrier dog. Yeah, you know, dogs. <laughs> Now, a Jack Russell. All right, so yeah, you, you just yeah. have your, let your Jack Russell run out there yeah, and made yeah. it out. That's care. a hard one yeah. to. It is, because I've heard people, and I'm sure you've heard the same thing, you know, using, you know, hot sauce. Oh, yeah. You know, some of these uh, repellents mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, I even knew a guy, believe it or not, the guy's an artist. He actually painted a styrofoam ball red like a tomato and actually positioned them on a tomato plant. Did that work? He said it actually worked for a little bit. Hmm. Hey. Uh, let me let me For mention let me mention one other thing uh, uh, that uh, my buddy Dave told me about up right. in Newburn, Tennessee, and he was able to grow sweet corn, and he kept the raccoons out of his sweet corn by doing this, and it worked. He put a radio out in his oh. garden. Oh, I thought, yeah. Okay. And he played, I think it was rock and roll music. I'm not <laughs> sure. I would prefer country. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, and I actually try that. I, I, I've had trouble with critters, you know, chewing the wires up in my vehicles. And since I've had a, got a radio blasting all the time, 24 hours a day, oh, uh, when I'm not there. Your neighbors uh, don't complain? Uh, you don't I, have any I neighbors? I don't have neighbors. I don't have any neighbors. <laughs> he ran uh, them off first. But, <laughs> uh, but you might, you might, uh, cons you may want to give that a try. Loud music. Loud music. Loud music. Yeah, I've heard that for deer too. Your oh. lights that come on, but see now no, that's they, for nocturnal. See that wouldn't okay. work with a squirrel because they yeah, out there all the time. Yeah. I say that and then this past weekend I drove home and pulled into my yard and the music was playing and a squirrel ran out from under my vehicle. Oh, and it was right by the radio. Gosh, so. They're getting used to it. They, yeah. Yeah. It's probably so, around there dancing to the tunes, yeah, right? Exactly. My wife said I needed to change oh. the channel. That, so, yeah. Oh, well, there you I go. Change the change change the I got used to that music. Ah. But, but the different voices oh, and the, you know, the DJ and the music and different songs hmm. and all that, it's a lot of variation there with the radio. So you may want to give that a try. Interesting. I want to give it a try. <laughs> all Let right. Know. Dr. Keller, Mr. D, that was fun. Yeah. yeah, I do yeah, enjoy yeah. That was fun. Thank you all much. Hello, gardeners, and welcome back into the studio of Channel 10. I'm Chris Hardaway. In a moment, we'll be with Chris Cooper and Mr. D. But right now, we're looking for you to call 325-6565 because this is viewer-supported TV. And if you love the programming on Channel 10, especially the family clock, you owe it to yourself to make the telephone call and pledge. If you look at all the how-to shows that we offer, I think we pretty much invented the how-to format here on PBS. You've got home, you've got garden, uh, you've got hobbies, you've got cooking. It's all on public TV, and it will stay here only if you support it. And great local shows like The Family Plot or Behind the Headlines or my show, The Best Times, are made possible in part by who? viewers like you making the telephone call and supporting this station with your dollars. So if you value the local programming and the local angle on things, make that telephone call. If you enjoy the information you get from all of the great how-to programs, make that telephone call and make that pledge. 325-6565. Let me entice you with all of our great gifts that we are offering. Starting at the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set, plus you'll be enrolled in Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the Mid-South Garden Guide plus that trowel and cultivator set. It's a 550-page book filled with lots of information. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's two tickets to attend a taping of The Family Plot. On Saturday, August 18th, you'll get to ask questions. Plus, you're going to get the trowel, the garden guide, and the cultivator set all here at Channel 10. Now let's go over to Chris. Hi, right, Mr. D. I want to talk a little bit more about this Mid-South Garden Guide. I mean, again, I take this everywhere I go. It is literally in my car, in my pool car, everywhere I go. I always pull this out. Good information in here. Actually has a month by month gardening guide. So every month you should be doing something in the garden. It tells you specifically what you need to be doing every month. And then it talks about lawns, you know, how to take care of your lawns. It talks about vegetables, the different type of cultivars you can actually grow in this area. It talks about the trees that you can grow in this area. So. Just about everything you want to know about gardening. Send so this so if you out. lack organizational skills, this organizes things for you. You can plan the future by looking at the future. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly right. You know what to, be, be prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, garden care. It talks about soil tests. 
You know, we've had some real good people that are actually contributors, you know, to this mix of garden guide. Our own extension folks yeah, are there. Booker T. Yeah, Lee, Booker Mary T. Wade, Miss Mary Wade. Wade. In there, yeah. Right. Impressive. You know, Dale Skaggs. Yeah. Sure. You know, so these people contributed to this book. So, of course, you know, they know what they were talking about. Of course. So it's good stuff. Yeah. But again, anything you want to know about gardening is definitely here. So I would, you know, tell folks, look, you will use this book. There's no doubt about that. Because you wish you had this book too, right? I do. I can't believe I've worked down here 15 years without <laughs> one on my desk. Uh, still haven't figured that out. Like I said, I got an autographed copy from Dale, you know, day one. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I've been using it ever since. It's good to have friends in high places. And it, <laughs> it always works out pretty good that way. Yeah. But again, we want the folks to make sure that they get this because this is great stuff. I mean, real good, good stuff. And again, I read it often, you know, because I want to stay current as well. So, this is current. Yep. It's good stuff. It's about here. It's about it's here. here. It's out. Right. It's the miss out. So, we want to make sure folks go ahead and get that, right? Correct. Now let me tell you how to get that book. They told you so much about it. It's a great book. Here's how you can get it. $10 ongoing monthly or $120 one-time gift to Channel 10, you can get the Mid-South Garden Guide. We'll also give you the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. As I said, it's a 550-page guide. It's written by and published by the Memphis Garden Club. So, as they said, it's highly localized. You will get information local information that covers things like vegetables, shrubs, trees, lawns, and lots more. And as, as Chris Cooper said, it features a month-by-month -month garden calendar for things like pruning and fertilizing. So, call now and get that garden guide. When you do, by the way, at that $10 ongoing monthly level, you'll also be enrolled in Passport and Member Card. Now, Member Card, you're asking, what's Member Card? Well, Member Card is a card that gives you two-for-one savings at restaurants, uh, lodgings, all sorts of great offers here in the Memphis and Mid-South area. In fact, we have some recent home and garden benefits that have just joined on to Member Card. Tri-State Irrigation is one, Bartlett Nursery another, Classic Lawns and Organic Services, and for home care, Flying Locksmiths and Memphis Computer Support. All are now a part of the Member Card. Great savings, great discounts, this card will pay for itself in short order. So that's for every contribution of, 60, of $75 or more. So make the telephone call. Let me go over the gifts one more time. At the $5 ongoing monthly level, it's the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set plus your Rolling Passport. At the $10 ongoing monthly level, it's the book that I just talked about. It has everything you need to know about local gardening and will also uh, enroll you in Passport and you'll get a member card. And at the $20 ongoing monthly level, it's two tickets to attend the taping of the Family Plot. The date is Saturday, August 18th. You'll get to meet Chris, Mr. D, and Joellen Diamond. Uh, each pair of tickets will have the opportunity to ask a question and have it answered on the show. So make the telephone call now because these tickets are in limited supply. Let's go back over to Chris and Mr. D. All right, Mr. D, how about the opportunity to have folks right here in the studio asking their gardening questions? How about that? It'll be kind of different. Hope they don't bring any rotten tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they want us to figure out what causes hey, the rot. You, you know, don't you throw have diseases? Yeah, 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 don't throw them at us. Don't do anything like that. But I, I actually think that's pretty neat. I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be, that'll be, that'll be new for us. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Intimidating, you think? Mm, nah, not nah, really. We, can help you, right? we do that every day. Yeah, we do it every day. It's yeah, part yeah, of your job, right? Day. That's right. Do it every day. But look, talking about the show again, we have so many hands-on sessions, you know, where we actually, you're actually out, you know, showing us again how to prune, how to plant, you know, blueberries, blackberries, how to put up a trellis. You remember that? All right, hands-on training. Yeah, I think my back's still hurting from that <laughs> trellis bit. Uh, that was, was it from the trellis or was it from actually, you know, tilling up the ground? Uh, well... Driving, well, both of them. Oh, both, okay. both of them. <laughs> yeah, that was a, kind of worked pretty hard. Uh -huh. yeah. But but good shows nonetheless. They are. And we have those, you know, garden minute segments, which are real good. You know, people actually like those as well. And again, you know, the questions. You know, it's a big part of the show because right. people, you know, local gardeners have those questions. Right. You know, and, and they're actually good questions. Yeah. How to, to make ask. how to mix pesticides and you know how to be safe mm -hmm. when you're out right. there, and we always emphasize that. Mm -hmm. and, um, being careful. Right, and I always tell them to read the label, you know, right. of course. Take care of your tools. Right, because yeah. <laughs> your tools take care of you, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, don't mention that to Peter, right? <laughs> right, no, I, you know, I guess repetition is good because some people, no, no matter how many times you tell them to clean their shovel, they, <laughs> they still won't clean their shovel. They won't clean it up, okay. <laughs> well, look, we want people to go to our website. We actually do have a website. Uh, we have a Facebook page. 
And on that website, look, we have, we have almost, what, a thousand videos? A Think about that for a second. A bunch of videos. A lot of gardening, you know, topics that are covered there. Right. And I think you might be a part of, what, maybe 900 of those, maybe? No, um, maybe a third of <laughs> maybe them. Maybe a third of them? Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe a couple more. Okay. We definitely appreciate you uh, being here, Mr. D, because you um, actually make it fun. It's been a so pleasure. It's really, it's really been a pleasure. Yeah. And we definitely want people to get out there and pledge. I mean, this is real important. They get some real good items, right? And, of course, they get that Mid-South Garden Guide, so. That's right. Good Please book. Please make that pledge. Yeah, good book. Mm -hmm. Mr. D might even get a book, too, right? I'm thinking pretty hard about it, man. I'll tell you. All right. Thank you. Well, I don't know how Mr. D is going to get his book, but I can tell you how you can get it. $10 ongoing monthly as a pledge, you can get the Mid-South Garden Guide plus the Family Plot Trowel and Cultivator Set. Now this is 550 pages of information published by the Memphis Garden Club. It contains everything you need to know and it's localized. It's for around here. So if you're interested in gardening, you need to have this book. We'll also uh, enroll you in Passport plus you'll get the member card at that $10 ongoing monthly level. Uh, so you're asking, what's Passport? You're going to be enrolling Passport, so what's that? Well, Passport is a digital gateway to thousands of public television programs. Our primetime lineup, for example, Masterpiece Theater, American Experience, I mean, you name it, it's all on Passport plus local shows. And you can watch on your smartphone, on your tablet, on your computer, or through Apple TV. Uh, it's a great way to keep up with public TV. If you miss a show and you forgot to DVR it too, well, you can catch up on Passport. So make the telephone call, 325-6565, and get Passport as an extra benefit of supporting this station. You know, speaking of support, we are a community-supported station. I mean, if you look at our budget, you are clearly the biggest slice of the budget pie to us. We can't do it without your help. That's why it's called Public TV. It's viewer-supported. So I urge you to make the call because, again, you're the biggest part of our pie. And no matter where you live, if you look at our broadcast map, we reach up into the Booth Hill of Missouri, uh, eastern Arkansas, north Mississippi, all of west Tennessee. It doesn't make any difference where you live inside that area. You are part of the Fan uh, Channel 10 family. Just join us by making that telephone call, 901 325 6565 and supporting this station. Now don't forget, don't forget, you can come to a taping of the family plot. It's only $20 ongoing monthly. Uh, so join us at that taping and thank you for your support to Public TV and the family plot. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us an email or letter. The email address is familyplot at wkno.org and the mailing address is familyplot 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee 38016. Or you can go online to familyplotgarden.com. That's all we have time for today. To get more information on anything we talked about, go to familyplotgarden.com. We have almost a thousand videos on all sorts of gardening topics. Also, we can't do this show without your support. Thanks to everyone who has called and made a pledge. If you haven't yet, pick up the phone and call 901-325-6565 or go online to wkno.org. Thanks again. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next week for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe.